Well, how hard is it to get the humanoid robot Atlas to do some of the things it's recently been doing? Let's forget the flips and all of that. Let's just look at the running. Maybe you can correct me, but there's something about running. I mean, that's not careful at all. That's you're falling forward. You're jumping forward and are falling. So how, how hard is it to get that right? Our first humanoid, we needed to deliver natural looking walking. You know, we took a contract uh, from the army. They wanted a robot that could uh, walk naturally. They wanted to put a suit on the robot and be able to test it in a gas environment. And so they wanted the, nat the, the motion to be natural. Um, and so our goal was a natural looking gait. It was really, it was surprisingly hard to get that to work. Um, and we, but we did build a, an early machine. Uh, we called it Petman prototype. It was the prototype before the Petman robot. Mm -hmm. And it had a really nice looking, um, gait where, you know, it would stick the leg out. It would do heel strike first mm -hmm. before it rolled onto the toe. So you didn't land with a flat foot. You extended your leg a little bit. Um, but even then, it was hard to get the robot to walk where it, when, when you were walking that it fully extended its leg and, and essentially landed on an extended leg. And if you watch closely how you walk, you probably land on an extended leg, but then you immediately flex your knee as you start to make that mm. contact. And getting that all to work well took such a long time. In fact, I, I probably didn't really see the nice natural walking that I expected out of our humanoids until maybe last year. And the team was developing on our newer generation of Atlas, you know, some new techniques um, uh, for developing a walking control algorithm. And they got that natural looking motion as sort of a byproduct of, a, of a, just a different process they were applying to developing the control. So that probably took 15 years, uh, 10 to 15 years to sort of get that from, from you know, the Petman prototype was probably in 2008, and what was it, 2022, <laughs> last year that I think I saw a good walking on Atlas. If you could just like linger on it, what are some challenges of getting good walking? So is it, um, is this is this partially like a hardware, like actuator problem? Is it the control? Is it the artistic element of just observing the whole system operating in different conditions together? I mean, is there some kind of interesting quirks or challenges you can speak to like the heel strike or all yeah so one of the things that makes the like this straight leg uh, a challenge is you're sort of up against a, a singularity a, a mathematical single singularity where you know when, when your leg is fully extended it can't go further the other direction right mm -hmm. there's only you can only move in one direction and that makes all of the calculations around how to produce torques at that joint or positions makes it more complicated. And so having all of the mathematics so it can deal with these singular configurations is one of many <laughs> challenges uh, uh, that we face. And I'd say in, in the, you know, in those earlier days, again, we were working with these really simplified models. So we're trying to boil all the physics of the complex human body into a simpler subsystem that we can more easily describe in mathematics. And sometimes those simpler subsystems don't have all of that complexity of the straight leg built into them. And so um, what, what's happened more recently is we're able to apply techniques that let us take the full physics of the uh, robot into account and, and deal with some of those uh, strange situations like the, like the straight leg. So is there a fundamental challenge here that it's, uh, maybe you can correct me, but is it under actuated? Are you falling? Underactuated is, is the right word, right? You can't you can't uh, push the robot in any direction you want to, yeah. right? And so that that is one of the hard problems of of uh, legged locomotion. And you have to do that for natural movement. It's not necessarily required for natural movement. It's just required. You know, we we don't have you know a gravity force that you can hook yourself onto to apply uh, an, an external force in the direction you want at all times right the only the only external forces are being mediated through your feet and how they get mediated depend on how you place your feet and uh you know you can't just uh you know god's hand can't reach down and give uh, and push in any direction you want <laughs> you know so is there uh is there some extra challenge to the fact that atlas is such a big robot there is the humanoid form is um, um, 
attractive in many ways, but it's also a challenge in many ways. Um, you have this big upper body that has a lot of mass and inertia. Um, and throwing that inertia around increases the complexity of maintaining balance. And as soon as you pick up something heavy in your arms, you've made that problem even harder. And so uh, in the early work in the leg lab and in the early days at the company, you know, we were pursuing these quadruped robots, which had a, a kind of built-in simplification. You had this big rigid body and then really light legs. So when you swing the legs, the leg motion didn't impact the body motion very much. All the mass and inertia was in the body. But when you have the humanoid, that doesn't work. You have big, heavy legs, you swing the legs, it affects everything else. And so dealing with all of that interaction does make the humanoid a much more complicated platform. 